Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you. We thank you, Father, that goodness and mercy are following us. Thank you. All the days of our lives, God. We thank you for allowing us the opportunity, Father, to be partakers in the cup of righteousness. God, as I stand before your people today, God, I decrease so that you can increase. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength. Amen. Right. Yes, Hallelujah. And Lord, I just bless you for a rhema word that penetrates the hearts of each and every person that's under the sound of my voice. Yes. May the backslider get right with you. Today. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. May the gossiper bite their tongue today. Yes. yes. May the individual, Father, that's 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 dead in transgression, Father, may they rise up yes. and be resurrected. Woo! God that's pleasing and acceptable unto you in a tangible way. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. 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 Before, before you sit down, I want you to touch a few people around you and tell them break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody say that with me one more time. Break every chain. Break every chain. Reggie, if you ever heard the saying, what you don't know won't hurt you. Let me see a show of hands again. What you don't know won't hurt you. Okay, okay. Can I submit something to you as I stand before you today? What you don't know will kill you. Amen. Watch this. The enemy wants to keep you dumb so that he can keep you bound. Amen. The enemy wants to keep you dumb so that he can keep you bound. Why? That's why it says in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. For a lack of knowledge. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 13 says that my people go into captivity for lack of knowledge. The enemy wants to keep you dumb so that he can keep you bound. And there are a lot of individuals that are in this place and, and through the sound of my voice that are walking with chains and shackles on them because of a lack Amen. of knowledge. There's so much ignorance in the body of Christ. And the enemy wants to play on your naivety. The two enemies of the kingdom of God is religion. Everybody say religion. religion. And ignorance. Religion is where we get the word religio. Everybody say religio. That is the Latin word for religiosity. And that religious word is that it's talking about, it means to return back to bondage. Religion will keep you in bondage. Religion will keep you gripped. The Bible says that it is the traditions of man that have made the word of God of none effect. Mark chapter 7 verse 13. It has deprived you of its force and authority. You won't be able to experience the fullness of who God is if you don't have understanding. Everybody say understanding. understanding. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 says in all you're getting, get understanding. In all thy getting, get understanding. What is understanding? A divine comprehension in your heart that gives you the ability to repeat something at will. Amen. A divine comprehension in your heart that gives you the ability to, 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 to repeat something at will. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to start off by going to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. John chapter 8, and let's start at verse 31. John chapter 8, and let's start at verse 31. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, if y'all need to get some chairs in the back, y'all go get us some chairs. Please. John chapter 8, verse 31. Mm -hmm. Everybody say, to the Jews. To the Jews. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if, everybody say if. if. That means that it's conditional. If you do what? 
hold you hold my teaching. to my teachings. To what? My teachings. To my teachings. That's a specific teaching. Let's go, Holy Spirit. That's a specific teaching. Amen. He said, my teaching. Everybody say, my teaching. My, my teaching. The Bible says, let God's curse fall on anyone who preaches any other gospel than the one we told you about. Amen. Even if an angel comes from heaven and preaches any other message, let him be forever cursed. Galatians chapter 1 verse 8. There are a lot of people who are preaching doctrines that are outside of what Jesus hey. had spoken. Wow. Are you hearing me? He said that they hold to my teaching. But that word hold, if you go back, it means to abide in my teaching. To abide in there. To live there. Not just quote it. Can I tell you something? As a side note, that there are a lot of phenomenal teachers, but they're not living it. Amen. There are a lot of people, man, who can preach the paint off the wall, Rev. Yes, sir. They can preach the paint off the wall, but they're not living it. It hasn't become a lifestyle to them. Amen. It's just making sense to them. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Who hold to my teaching, meaning who cling, who remain fast to it. You are really, everybody say really. Really, really my disciples. What is a disciple? A disciplined learner. It's the pupil. It's the apple of God's eye. This is why he said in Zechariah chapter 2 verse 8, whoever touches you touches the apple of my eye. Amen. Let's go to the next verse. Uh huh. Then, everybody say then. then. I have an if, then I have a then. If is a conditional situation. Then you receive the promises. Then you will know about. The then you will know. Then you will know. Then you will know. There is a lot of people who know about the truth, but they don't know the truth. Amen. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth, hallelujah, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through Amen. me. Amen. John 14, verse 6. Then you will know, no, no. That word know means to become one with. It means to be intimate. It's the Jewish idiom for intercourse. I have now become one. Then you will know the truth. And the truth might do what? Will. Huh? Will. It might or it will. will. It will set you free. Everybody say will. will. Now I have a situation. Now I have a dilemma because my will is a makeup of, watch this, my soulish realm. Everybody say the soulish realm. My soul is a makeup of my mind, my will, and my emotions. You have to watch out for those three voices. Man. Watch out for those three voices. My mind, my will, my emotions. My mind, uh-oh. Watch it. <sighs> mind, will, emotions. My mind says, I think. My will says, I want. My emotions say, I feel. I think, I want, I feel. My mind, my will, my emotions. I never follow my soul. I never follow what I think. I never follow what I want. And I never follow my emotions, what I feel. That's why I'm led by the spirit of the living God. Those who are led by the spirit of God, those are the sons of God. Amen. Romans chapter 8 verse 14. Is this making sense to y'all so far? Uh huh. That's why he said, I will bless the Lord <laughs> at all times. Hallelujah. His praise shall continually be in my mind. Psalm 34 verse 1. Is this blessing y'all so far? Uh huh. Uh huh. Then you will know. The truth. And the truth will do what? Set your, will set your mama now. You Because that's why we come to church. We come to church to take notes so we can go back and bash somebody else with them. Jesus. That's why we do it. Oh, oh what, what, what? I went to church today. And see, you were still asleep, but I went to church. Amen. And that meant that pastor preached, it was shown for you. <laughs> he was stepping on some toes of that. I know it was for you. Amen. And that's how we look at the word of God. We look at the word of God as a, a window and not a mirror. When you look at the word as a mirror, it's going to always show you your reflection. Amen. So anytime I'm approaching this word of God, if I'm always getting a scripture for somebody else, that means that I'm interpreting it the wrong way. Amen. I got to look at this word. For me, the word of Amen. God is allowing that to Sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates even to the body and soul and spirit. Joints and marrow that judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. I got some hunger in the room today. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's some hunger in here today. Hallelujah. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. free. Let's go to the next verse. Hallelujah. They answered him. We are Abraham descended and have never been slaves of anyone. How can, how can you say we shall be set free? 
Have y'all ever heard the truth go for it? And somebody try to contradict the truth? Jesus. That's what's happening right here. Amen. Let's go to the next verse. Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, everyone who sins is a what? Slave. Is a slave to sin. Watch this. No one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in them. First John chapter 3, verse 9. Now let me tell you something. You have a sinner, but then you have someone who sins from time to time. We all have sin and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. But what makes me a sinner is I'm actively involved in my unrepented sin. I'm actively involved in it. I'm knee deep in it. I'm, I'm knee deep in these iniquities. Everybody say these iniquities. Uh huh, uh huh. The weakness in my character that keeps me falling into the same sin over and over and over again. God, I don't understand myself. For I really want to do what's right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do the very thing I hate. Romans chapter 7, verse 13. Is this making sense to y'all so far? I'm knee deep in these iniquities, and these iniquities are things that have been handed down to me from previous generations. Amen. That's why it's so hard for me to fight loose. That's why it's so hard for me to break loose from these certain situations in my life. Jesus. I'm dealing with this lust because my daddy was a rolling stone. Amen. I'm dealing, I'm dealing with, with this anger and this rage because I had a generation of murderers that was in my family. Amen. So you want to package me up a gift, and instead of packaging, packaging me up a gift and handing me generational blessings, you hand me generational curses. Amen. Now I'm the one who has to deal with it. I got to deal with the mess. I got to deal with the pride. I got to deal with the promiscuity. I got to deal with the alcoholism. I got to deal with all of these different things. I have to deal with this. Amen. That's your gift to me as you go to the grave. What are you going to leave this next generation? Heaven and earth will pass away. But my words will never pass away. Matthew 24, Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Everyone who sins is a slave. Let's go to the next verse. No, now. Everybody say now. Now a slave has no permanent place in the what? In the family. In the family. A slave has no Permanent place in the family, Miss London. Hallelujah. A slave has no what? Permanent. Permanent place in the family. But, everybody say but. But. But a son belongs to it forever. A slave has no permanent place in the family. That's why every time you see a salvation call, your hand go up every week. Jesus. Every week. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I want to be saved because you profess on Sunday, but Monday all the way back to Sunday again, you live like hell. Amen. Amen. You're not a son yet. You're not a son yet. You're not a son yet. You're not a son yet because your nature will change. The very essence of who you are will change. You're just making sense of you. David behaved himself wisely in all his ways. Amen. <laughs> and the Lord was with him. According to 1 Samuel 18, verse 14, he behaved himself wisely in all his ways. No matter what happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Amen. Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. Are y'all getting in the Bible so far? Y'all are putting it. 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 One season. I'm here. And I'm on fire for the Lord. I'm on fire for him. I'm coming in consistently. I'm reading my word consistently. And the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things enter in and choke the word of God out, making it unfruitful, according to Mark chapter 4, verse 19. Now, I'm back in the world again. Jesus. Amen. And I'm thinking I can go out here and get a temporary fulfillment, Maria. I think I can go out here and get a temporary cleansing because now I don't have all of these other different responsibilities of the church anymore because the church hurt me. Amen. And the people in there are so hypocritical. And I don't like the pastor because he was in my window talking. He went back and somebody must have told him what I was doing. Because everything that he preached had to do with me. Amen. So I know that y'all, I know y'all, somebody been talking to me. <laughs> I'm finna go home and I'm finna change my blinds. So you get offended so that you go back out into the world. Amen. And then you get into the world and the world don't treat you any better. Amen. So now you find yourself back in the church and something else happened in the church and then you go back into the world Woo! and then you here and then you there and then you cha cha real smooth. Amen. <laughs> and that's the life you live in. Lord. Instead of being planted, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall do what? Shall flourish in the courts of our God. Everybody say go through the storm. Go through the storm. Stop stopping in the valley. Ha, ha, ha. 
Hallelujah. Stop Hallelujah. stopping in the valley. Woo! Every time Jesus. the valley comes, you want to stop. Amen. Stop stopping when it's the valley season of your life. The valley is the low place. Amen. The valley is the dry and desolate place. You'll find out who's really with you in the valley. Yeah. Amen. Why are you stopping in the valley? That's right there is where God is defining Woo! you. Amen. What the enemy can't, what the enemy can't contain, he tries to do. What the enemy, listen to me, what the enemy cannot destroy, he tries to defame. Like that. Amen. What the enemy cannot destroy, he tries to defame. Mm. That's why he wants to defame wow. your name. If he can't destroy you, he's gonna try to defame you. Wow. He's gonna try to vilify your name. And do you know that that can be held up in a court appointed law? Amen. I'm that can be held up in a court appointed law when there's a defamation of character. Huh, you can get in trouble for that. Amen. Does this make sense to y'all so far? Amen. So you better watch your mouth. Amen. You better hold your tongue here and through these airwaves, myself included. Death and life are in the what? Or in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Proverbs 18, verse 21. You don't know who you put your mouth on, so you better watch it. Amen. Jesus. I don't care if you're thinking it in your heart. Is this making sense to you? Amen. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The mouth speaks. Luke chapter 6, verse 45. Watch this. A drunk mind will always speak a sober heart. Amen. A drunk mind will always speak a sober heart. So you better make sure that there's no drunkenness on the inside of this head right here. Jesus. Is this blessing y'all so far? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it. Forever, I'm solidified, even in my mess. I'm solidified, even when I know that I come short from time to time. I'm solidified, even though I know I was fasting and I ended up eating that cheeseburger and I wasn't supposed to. I'm solidified. Amen. Knowing that God doesn't judge me based off of my appetite. Amen. Physically, but he judged me based on my appetite spiritually. Yeah. He who hungers and thirsts for righteousness shall be filled. My God in heaven. Matthew chapter 5 verse 6. Let's go to the next verse. Let's do it. So, everybody say so. So. If the who? The son. The son is that a capital letter S? Uh-huh, uh-huh. The Son sets you free, you will what? You will be free indeed. If the Son sets you free, this is talking about Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Everybody say, I'm free indeed. I'm free indeed. Anything outside of Jesus Christ is a false freedom. And that's what we've been going to. We've been going to all of these different people, places, and things for freedom and find ourselves getting wounded and coming right back to the same place again because the only one that can suffice, the only one that can bring fulfillment in your life is the Son Hallelujah. of God. The Son sets free. Hallelujah. It's free. It's free indeed. It's free indeed. Everybody say freedom. 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 The power or right to act, speak, or think as one wants without hindrance or restraint is liberation. Unrestrained, exempt from obligation or liability. The Bible says where the Lord is, excuse me, now the Lord is spirit. Mm -hmm. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen. Second Corinthians 3 verse 17. Now the Lord is spirit and where, the, and where, and where, everybody say and where. And where. Well, that means I have to locate it. Man. <laughs> Geographically showing, I have to locate him. Because he's not everywhere. Jesus. He's not everywhere. I don't care. You have a lot of people who will tell you, I don't care where you go, just get to church. You better not. Amen. You better, no, 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 no. You better not. Now, I don't care where you go, just get to, no, 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 no. You get what the infallible word of God is being taught. All scripture is God breathed. Amen. And it's used for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Is this making sense to you? Now the Lord is spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. You have to be at the right place at the right time in order for you to receive your breakthrough and your encounter with the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. There, there, there. 2020. 2020. It was a world epidemic 
that took place. 2020, everyone was forced to come into a place of creativity. 2020, a lot of people thought that it would be the end of the church as we know it. They, they, they had what you call a pandemic. Everybody say a pandemic. Okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh. They had what you call a, a, a pandemic. And in the middle of the pandemic, I saw so many individuals agreeing with this person and that person and that person and that person. And I was hearing all of the different voices. And I said, Lord, I got to get to my secret place. I have to get to my secret place. And when I got to my secret place, I said, God, I understand that they said as a church, as a body, we have to think of creativity and think of ideas to be able to, to, to still minister to the sheep that you've entrusted to our care. What do you want me to do? He said, I never told you to stop. Amen. I couldn't speak for anybody else, but I know I heard clearly. CW, I never told you to stop. Woo. Amen. I couldn't speak for this church. I couldn't speak for that church. I couldn't speak for all of these other different churches. But CW, you, you keep going, boy. Amen. You keep going. Go forth. Go forth. Go forth. So I'm like, Lord, how they going to look at me? Lord, how they going to perceive me? They going to think I'm a renegade out here. They going to think I'm crazy. But let me tell you something. We went straight through that pandemic without shutting these doors yes. one time. Amen. He said, to think of, watch this. he said to think of creative ideas. It never said to shut down. The Bible says, oh, uh, oh, oh, that one of you will shut the temple door so that you would not like use this fire on my altar. Come on. <laughs> my God, <laughs> my God. Malachi chapter 1 verse 10. And I believe that that's why God had to come through and do some shaking. Because there were some useless fires being lit on his altar. Jesus. That's what was taking place during that time. And what happened during the pandemic is got to a place to where, okay, only five could be in the building. Amen. Only 10 could be in the building. Only 15 could be in the building. Okay, now we can open it back up to, to more capacity. Yeah. But see, before that, I had a voice in my head. Even before those individuals, I had a beautiful spouse walking alongside of me saying, hey, I think we need to start going live on Facebook and stuff like that. And I'm like, no, nah, if they want to see, they can come and I don't care about none of that. Jesus ain't had no entourage. <laughs> Jesus ain't had no flyers. He passed out. Jesus ain't doing none of that. She wanted like that. You got to get, you got to get with it. Because during this pandemic, you have to realize now you get the opportunity for those who 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 are near and far to be able to hear your word. Hallelujah. You get the opportunity for those Hallelujah. because you know that the majority of our congregation is not even really from Eagle Lake. So there's some who won't be able to travel in. So you got to be able to get creative with bringing the word out. So everything that y'all see when it comes to social media, everything that you see when it comes to Facebook, when it comes to YouTube, when it comes to Instagram, all of this stuff from off of my wife. It wasn't CW. Hallelujah. It wasn't CW. It was the help me that he put alongside me. It was the person that he put alongside of me. And, and, and they had something in the midst of this situation called a pandemic brain. Everybody say a pandemic brain. Pandemic, pandemic brain is when you get foggy in your mind. When, when, when your speech is slurred and you really can't articulate it and you find yourself confined in this place for so long. And let me tell you something, that the pandemic is over, but the, let me tell you something, a lot of people are outside of the pandemic. The pandemic is over with, but the pandemic is still on the inside of you. Yeah, you still have the pandemic on the inside of you because I don't want to go to quote unquote church no more. That old way is, uh, that old way is over with, it's done. When the Bible says not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as some are in the habit of doing. Amen. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. Amen. I want you to do me a favor. Can you pull those pictures up for me? Can you pull those pictures up for me? Now, now, now in the midst of this situation, I had to get broken free from what people thought about me. The Bible says, woe to you, watch this, when all men speak well of you. <laughs> Luke chapter 6 verse 26. Woe to you, Lita, when all men speak well of you. Because that means that there's some people pleasing going on. Uh huh. Woe to you when that happens. The Bible says we must. Everybody say we must. We must, we must obey God rather than man. Acts chapter 5 verse 29. We must obey God rather than man. Uh huh. Uh huh. To obey is better than sacrifice. And to hearken than the fat of lambs. 1 Samuel 15 22. Are y'all being blessed by this word? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. That picture up for me real quick. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. 
Bible says that it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Everybody say a yoke. A yoke. A yoke. A yoke. A yoke. A yoke. The Bible says that the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. It never says that the, sh the yoke shall be destroyed because of adrenaline. <laughs> it says because of the anointing. And a lot of people are in the church because they want that rush. They want that feel. And the Bible says that they received the word with joy, but it had no root. Mark chapter 4, verse 16. Is this making sense to y'all so far? They received the word with joy, but it had no root. Ah! They doing all of that hollering, but as soon as they leave, what did, what, what did the preacher say? I don't know, but it was sure good. <laughs> they come. I don't care about you jumping, but when you come down, you better make sure you got some substance on the inside of you. Amen. Something that's going to hold you. It just making sense to y'all so far. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Can y'all put that picture up? Okay. That's cool. And watch this. Everybody say, break every chain. Break every chain. Hear me when I tell you this. Hear me when I tell you this. I, I remember, I remember when God started to deal with my heart about leaving certain people, places, and things. That's familiar because I had someone at the time come up to me. The, the Bible never tells you to leave your family. Your family is, is always going to be there with you. But it wasn't until I started to get a little bit more of knowledge on the inside of me that the Bible says in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, leave your country, your people, and your father's household and go to the land that I will show you. He told Abram that, leave them behind. I am no good if I'm still stuck in the same environment. It's time for me to detach myself so that growth and maturation can take place in my life. Is this making sense to y'all so far? So what ended up happening was I did not know that I was struck with something. I was struck with something called survival's remorse. I was struck with something called survivor's remorse. Everybody say survivor's remorse. Survivor's, what is survivor's remorse? remorse. When you feel guilty for leaving the people behind. Jesus. And they make you feel guilty for it. But you left me. You were supposed to still be here with me. It's that crab in the bucket effect where they try to pull you down. And like I said once before, it's not that they don't want you to do good. They just don't want you to do better than them. Survivor's remorse. Is this making sense to you? Everybody say, I have to go. I have to go. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. So this was going back to, to, to during the pandemic. And, and I want to read. I want to read a couple of these, these, these to you. And it was all because my wife and I listened to her. I humbled myself and I said, you know what? You're right. This first one right here, I'm going to read this one in the red. This message was so key for me. It's what I know but needed to have reinforced so that I can really know and apply to my, uh, to my life daily. Your message blessed me all the way up in Canada. Hallelujah. I shared it among friends and family too. Thank you for being obedient and courageous in delivering this timely yes. word. Thank you. Hallelujah. That was Canada. I've never seen this person. Don't know who they are. Watch this. The next one. The next one. That was good teaching. My husband and I sat up and watched it together. Even though I got to get up at 5 a.m. God bless this ministry and thank you for teaching our father's truth. Shawana responds. She says, hallelujah. We thank you both so much for tuning in. This has truly blessed us by your comment. Thankful that the Lord is using us and being open and willing vessels. May I ask where you and your husband are from? He, she said, we are from Nashville. Hallelujah. We met in Atlanta in college and I, not, and I, I was not Christian. 
and, and, and studied a lot of different religions, God saved me and blessed me with a godly husband. I love your raw passion. Yes. So even in his hometown, amongst his relatives, and in his own household, is a prophet of God. He could not do any miracles there except lay hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed, not at their faith, but their lack of faith. Mark 6, verses 4 through 6. Is this making sense to y'all so far? It's usually the hometown. Yeah. It's usually the people that's common with you. It it's usually the individuals that's around who probably knew you when. I remember you when. I remember you when. I remember you. I know you. I know. They, they, it said that when Jesus was doing miracles, they were amazed at it. But then they took offense at him and said, man, this is Mary and Joseph's boy. Yes. See, they diminished the anointing because they became common with it. Yes. And this yes. makes sense to you. Yes. Everybody say, I have to break free. I have to break free. Uh -huh. I have to. I have to break free. I have to break free. I have to break free. I need, uh, I need two people. Two people. Come here, Tavi. I want you to come up here. Come here, wife. You come up here with me. Come up here with me. Go to Matthew 23, verse 25. Matthew 23, verse 25. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Both y'all stand right here. I know I said it earlier, but y'all tell my wife happy birthday. Happy birthday. Watch this. I ain't gonna say you go, girl. I'm gonna say you glow, girl. There's <laughs> <laughs> something. You, you know a song. You know a song. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know a song because you've been asked for something. Watch this. Watch this. Y'all switch sides. Switch sides. Flip, 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 flip. Matthew 23, verse 25. This is what it says. Jesus says, you're so careful. Everybody say, you're so careful. You're so careful. You're so careful to clean the outside of the cup of dish. But inside, everybody say, but inside. But inside, you're full of greed and self-indulgence. You're so careful to clean the outside of the cup of dish. But inside, you're full of greed and self-indulgence. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees. You what? Hypocrite. You clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of what? Greed and self-indulgence. Now watch this. Watch this. You have individuals that when you look at them on Sundays, oh, they, they look amazing. They can play the part. They, watch this. They professional Christians. They can quote the scriptures to you. They can dot every I. They can cross every T. And it looks good externally. And they come to church and you look at them like, like, man, that's the standard. Amen. But watch this. In the spirit, this is how they look. In the spirit, this is what it, this is what it looks like. This is, this is what it looks like. And what happens is the pastor... Give the altar call for you to come up so that you can receive the deliverance that you need. And, and, and he said, come up and, and you get up out your seat and start walking. And as soon as you get up out your seat, the enemy got you right here. Ooh, Jesus. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. The enemy, the enemy keep you gripped in your seat. And then watch this. The pastor tells you, lift, lift your hand and worship. Lift your hand. Uh-uh, don't do that. Ooh, Jesus. Go, go over there and meet and greet the next person. Go over, uh -uh, come on back here. 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 
And see, that's what happens. <laughs> that's what happens when you have an external form of who God is. But internally, you full of greed and self-indulgence. Everybody say greed. 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 The Bible says do not withhold good. From those who deserve, or who, from those who deserve it, when it is in your power to act, in Proverbs three, verse twenty-seven. So what happens is, you know, God is telling you to sow into this family. You have it, you have it. So you end up giving, but when you give, you give in tight fisted. Yes. And as soon as you give, well, as soon as you give, they're like, oh my God, this blessed me so much. It's a blessing for them, but it was hard for you to let that go. Amen. Because in your head, you're like, give me my money. Yeah. <laughs>
I said, well, hold on, stay on there. I'm going to close out with a dream. He said, stop fighting so I can save you. Man. And I'm still slapping the water. Bah, bah. I'm knocking a hole in the water trying to think I'm finna get up. Until eventually, I just stopped. And as soon as I stopped, he came and wrapped his arms around me. And he was able to bring me back to where I first started. And my word to each and every last one of y'all today is you need to stop fighting so God can save you. Amen. Stop fighting so he can save you. You've been fighting for far too long. You've been doing everything in your own strength for far too long. The Bible says it's hard for you to kick against the prince. It's hard for you to kick against the goals. And Acts 26 verse 14, you've been fighting, trying to do this your own way for far too long. Stop fighting so he can save you. He's ready to save you. <laughs> He's ready to save you. And all you got to do is lift your hands in the air and say, God, I want to be saved. I need to be saved. I surrender it all to you. Not just some of it, but I surrender it all to you. I surrender my mind. I surrender my finances. I surrender my spouse, my children. I surrender everything that concerns me because I know that you will perfect those things which concern me. So I'm going to say, God, I bless your name. Is this making sense to y'all? Amen. About about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and doing what, you guys? And singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. They were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other what? Prisoners. 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 I have a voluntary prisoner and I have a prisoner that's taken against my own will. Anytime you're taken against your own will, that means that the enemy has just brought you into captivity. But when I volunteer to be a slave, that means that I surrender everything to the Lord. Amen. Voluntarily. I give everything to him. Is this making sense to you? I give him, I give him my all. Let's go to the next verse. Uh-huh. 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 Suddenly. Everybody say suddenly. 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 Suddenly, suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were what? Shaking. Everybody say at once. at once. Oh my God, in the same scripture, you mean to tell me, in the same scripture, you mean to tell me, Tam, that I have a suddenly and an at once? Oh my God, please read the Bible with me. In the same scripture, the Bible tells me that I have a suddenly and I have an at once. That means that the breaker has just come through on my behalf. We need some suddenlies and Lord, we need some at once. We need these things. I need the breaker of anything to come in and pierce the atmosphere so that I can step into my ears to come. Is this making sense to y'all so far? The Bible says suddenly. That was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prisoners' doors flew open and everyone's chains came do you know that your praise can set somebody else free? Amen. Your praise Amen. can set somebody else free. Let me tell you something. Prayer sends angel, but praise brings God. Amen. Angels hearken to the voice of his word, Psalms 103, verse 20. But praise brings God. He inhabits the praises of his people. The Tehillah is what Psalm 22, verse 3 calls it. The Tehillah praise. God, I praise you. God, I bless you. God, I magnify you. In spite of everything that's going on around me, I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you worship. I'm praising you in the midst of hardship. I'm praising you in the midst of backbiting. I'm praising you in the midst of gossip.
Touch your neighbor and say, don't lose your praise. Don't lose your praise. That's all you got. <laughs> you can take the money. <laughs> you can take the cars. You can take the house. <laughs> Lord, don't take your presence from me. And don't take my praise. <laughs> don't take my anointing. Don't take the trouble from me. God, I need you. I need you more than heaven I breathe. I don't care. I ain't looking for the tangibles. I'm looking for the intangible. The things that money can't buy. Don't take this from me. Don't take that from me. God, I need you more than anything on the inside of me. Hallelujah. <laughs> if you want the anointing increased in your life, realize that it's going to take you going through some hard things. If you want the anointing in your life, you have to realize Amen. this is this life ain't no crystal stair. <laughs> it's got thorns, it's got splinters, and it's got bruises in it. Amen. <laughs> Only the strong survive. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the life of the way. Oh, that's the life of the way. That's the life of people that you look directly in the eyes. They shake hands with you, and you still got to bless them going in and bless them going out because you know what they're talking about. That's the life of a believer. Oh, my God. I was talking to Tavi just the other day, and we were talking about bullying. And I said, Tavi, but who bullies the bully? Amen. Where do you think the bullying originated from? The parents bully the children. So that's why the children are bullying other children. Amen. That's where it happens at. So even in the body of Christ, you got bullies. Amen. <laughs> but woe be unto God to each and every bully who tries to put their mouth on an anointed vessel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't care about your religion. I don't care about your broken scripture. I don't care about your broken English. I don't care about your Greek and Hebrew. The Lord my God shall fight my God. you telling me that the people are following man and not following God. I don't care about you telling me that this person is moving too quick. That's why uh, 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 God don't care if you listen to secular music. Man, please, I'm going to tell you right now as I look through these airwaves because I know a lot of y'all watching. <laughs> I love you with everything on the inside of me. And people here too, I love you with everything on the inside of me, but you won't stop me because you can't break me. I'm built for this. I've been made for this, man. I'm created for this. You guys don't take more than that to stop me, man. God has called me to this. And this is tattooed on my heart. This is stuck on my heart. This is a perfect on my heart. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah. Glory, Father. In spite of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yeah. Jesus. Glory. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Break every chain. Put that on for me. Break every chain. Jesus. Break every chain. We still alive. Father. In the name of Jesus, I speak life over each and every person that's on the sound of my voice. Lord, you know, those who don't know you, I just believe by faith that they come into the absolute Jesus. fullness. Amen. I honor you, God, and I thank you so much for everything thank that you're doing you. here through these airways. Thank you. I thank you that the convicting power of the Holy Spirit thank you. hits me, hits the people that's here, thank and hits you. the people that's thank through you, the airways. Jesus. Thank you. It's time for a change. Yes. Thank you. The time for plain church is over with. Amen. Lord, may we live a life that's pleasing and acceptable. Yes. Thank you. I bless you, Father. 
that the hurt people Thank through you. these airwaves, that they receive a supernatural healing Amen. and an infusion. Yes. I don't Jesus. know why, but I just see individuals that's just that's, that's just weeping in their beds Amen. right now. I see Jesus. people pulling over on the side of the road. Hallelujah. That I feel the Hallelujah. Yes. 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 Right yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I bless you, God, for Thank true you. repentance. For it's your will that all men be saved and oh, come to yeah. the knowledge of the truth. First Timothy 2, verse 4. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Amen.